So I'm here at the River Tay, you can see the River Tay just here. You can probably see Sirius over there, the brightest star in the sky. Whoa, what was that? So I'm here at the River Tay, you can see the River Tay just here and I can't remember the name of the bridge but it's quite a famous bridge in Perth I think it's Cargill, I think Anyway, it makes for a brilliant picture and with the Ryan over it and then the moon as well it makes a really good image I've never seen a night sky picture of this bridge so that's why I'm here to try and get that So I've took some pictures with a 14mm Samyang I took about four foreground images and then one single sky image and I'll start them together and get a nice clean image and I think the image looks really cool. There's really dark skies here as well I'm surprised because we're kind of looking over Perth so I thought it would be a wee bit of a, well, a lot of light pollution sorry but we're actually not too bad at all you can see quite a lot you can see the Orion Nebula with your eye. I took another shot up the River Tay going north and that I used the 24mm for that but there's not much going on in that direction so it's just a nice starry shot so that turns out nice as well but I'm really fo looking forward to seeing what this image looks like yeah on the back of the camera it looks really good there's a lot of salmon jumping about because every now and then I can hear something splashing So I've just came along the river a wee bit to find this completely flooded area beside a bridge. There's a bridge there. This area is completely fr flooded from the thawing of the snow that we've had. Whoa! What was that? Wait, I oh, think I haven't caught that on camera. But yeah, there's a nice twig not twig, half a tree floated down it makes for a good foreground with the Ryan over it so I've got some good pictures with the 24mm so I'm going to go down to the 40mm just to get more of this wide but yeah, it's so mild as well so so mild you can probably see Sirius over there the brightest star in the sky and just above that is Orion which has just gone behind cl some cloud so yeah, it's so mild just tonight which is a change because we've had the sub zero temperatures for ages hence why there's so much flooding because all the snow's just thawed but anyway that's the final location for the river so I'm going to head on to Perth and try and get some earth shine going behind Perth hopefully but there is some cloud keep coming and going so we'll see how we get on After a 20 minute trip in the car, I headed to a field just outside of Perth that I knew had a clear view west. Clouds kept coming and going, so I had everything crossed that they would clear as the moon set down to the horizon. I set up the Ioptron sky tracker so that when I took a zoomed in shot of the moon at a high focal length, the movement of the moon wouldn't create a blurred image as the sky tracker counteracts Earth's rotation, keeping the moon in frame at all time. 
To get precise tracking, you need to point the sky tracker due north, and we can find due north by finding Polaris, the North Star. To find Polaris, you take the last two stars in the Plough constellation and point it to the next bright star. This will be Polaris. You can get even more precise tracking if you're doing deep sky photography by downloading an app which will show you the exact true north. I decided to use my Canon 1300D, which has turned into my time-lapse camera as the quality isn't there for images, so it's turned into a time-lapse workhorse for me. I attached the 75 to 300mm lens to get close in shots, but I'll explain in a minute why that didn't work. Therefore, I put the 18 to 55mm, which is the kit lens for the camera. So, update I'm in Perth. I've got a waxing crescent over, just sitting over Perth just now. I've got a time lapse going on the Optron. I was trying to zoom in, but my 300mm lens is kind of at the end of its life and it's, the quality's not there anymore so I've abandoned that and I'm just in a time lapse so hopefully that turns out nice. It's clear skies all the way to her the horizon so I think that's going to be a nice wee time lapse so I'll leave that running. I've got the Sigma 150 to 600 mil. I'll attach this that to this camera and try and get some really close in shots and some detail on the moon and hopefully when it's down near the horizon it will have faded and I'll be able to blend it in with the street lights and it'll look quite cool. So hopefully if I get a nice time lapse of this and then nice close in pictures of this wax and crescent, I think that'll be a good night. So here I am with the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter. It's a brilliant lens for moon photography. You can just see how close in it can zoom into so pretty much all the way so now we just have to wait for the moon to set a wee bit just to get some more pictures so I'll stick beside this and then my obviously time lapse is going as well so this is me for the next 30 to 40 minutes not bad it's nice and mild anyway which is good right so because this is a Sigma lens and this is a Sony camera they don't connect to each other. So I had to go on Amazon and purchase a uh, thing was about 15 or 20 pound adapter that connects both of them together because they're different companies. But this, it, since it's just cheap, it doesn't connect the lenses electronically. So it doesn't have the autofocus feature, but you don't want autofocus for astrophotography because it just knackers pictures. You just don't want autofocus in the dark. So it works a charm for 15, 20 quid. It's brilliant and I can get some high ISO shots with this lens, which is not what this lens is meant for, but it performs really well under it. The clouds may have ruined my plan for the night, but you always have to try. I just enjoy the night under the clear skies. My Orion images came out brilliant, so I'm very proud of ticking them off the list. Thank you for watching, and I can't wait to get back out again. Cheers.